We are awakening together. This is our weekly gathering we hold online. For more information, visit our website, awakening-together.org. We'd love to see you there. I can see everybody's faces now. Hello. Good morning, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, a lot of the times I get to listen to these on the recordings, and now I get to listen to it as it comes out. <laughs> um, you know, today, if you had saw kind of the email, we're going to talk about deepening your highest clarity and the not so secret way of doing it. Um, but before we get into all that, hello, really glad you're here. Really hope that you have a good time and that we all get a chance to greet one another and share in the community we have here at Awakening Together. You know, so, it's so nice to see all your names and all the places that you come from and to think of how we're able to come together with shared purpose and values in this community and be with each other on our paths. You know, our purpose here at Awakening Together is actually clearly written out and defined. And this is what it says. We are an assembly of equals joined in common purpose, awakening to one true self. Within an appearance of many faiths, many cultures, many symbols, we seek to discern one truth and to rest in its embrace. And that's what we'll do this morning. During this homily, I'm going to focus on our third core value. And our third core value at Awakening Together reads, we accept one true self which is one presence or being, non-dual, without beginning or end, and absolutely changeless. We live this value by practicing letting go of the belief in the individual self as who we are. And I think this will be a very exciting lesson because there is a lot going on in our everyday life that is absolutely without beginning or end. It is absolutely changeless and is completely available right now to get into. And before we get into it right now, I have some announcements for the going-ons that are happening here at Awakening Together, and then I'll give us an opening song so we can set. So those are all the announcements that we have for today. And before we kind of get into our our time to talk about some spiritual concepts and to practice them. Let's center, and we have an opening song that will help us do that, and then I'll lead us through a little centering. So in this song that Marisol is going to play, there's a line that says, find peace in the violence. I liked that line a lot and chose that for this song. And there's another part that talks about no longer staying quiet no longer letting my inner wisdom stay quiet while I live life. So that's my inspiration for this song, and I'll let you hear it for yourself and see what you think. Marisol? Thank you so much, Marisol. You all might have a chuckle at me because it's going to make me cry just listening to this one song. I've listened to it probably every day this week, and I just don't know why it has been so inspiring. To me. But um, thank you so much for being here. And let's get still for a moment before Inca leads us through some readings. Usually when I do these, I like to talk to something. And today, I'm going to talk to the universe. So universe, thank you so much for bringing us together. Thank you for the unending opportunity that we have to find peace in the violence. Whether the violence I see is in the world around me or in the voice in my head, you always give me the opportunity to find peace. And I ask that I may allow the voice of inner wisdom to no longer stay quiet, that I might follow it wherever it may lead me. All the masters have said it, 
to deepen into your highest clarity, abide in openness and silence. Thank you for that possibility. Amen. Or a all. I can't remember. I learned a funny one from um, Miss Yolanda the other day. I can't remember what it is now. But as I said, all the masters have said it. To deepen into your highest clarity, abide in openness and in silence. That can be inquiry or surrender or contemplation or meditation. Whatever path we choose, at some point going up the mountain, it all turns to silence. And a wonderful Inca has been willing to read for me. I'm so, so grateful, Inca. Thank you so much. Um, and I will give you the microphone to do that. Passage one, Ramana Maharshi, be as you are. Formless worship is possible only for people who are devoid of the ego form. Know that all of the worship done by people who possess ego form is only worship of form. The pure state of being attracted to grace, self, which is devoid of any attachment, alone in one's own state of silence, which is devoid of any other thing. Know that one's ever abiding as that silence, having experienced it as it is, alone is true mental worship. Know that the performance of the unceasing true and natural worship in which the mind is submissively established as the oneself, having installed the Lord on the hard throne, is silence, the best of all forms of worship. Passage 2. I'm that. Nizagadara Maharaj. In reality, only the ultimate is. The rest is a matter of name and form. And as long as you cling to the idea that only what has name and shape exists, the Supreme will appear to you non-existent. When you understand that names and shapes are hollow shells without any content whatsoever, and that is real is names and formless, pure energy of life and light of consciousness, you will be at peace, immersed in the deep silence of reality. Passage 3, Michael Longford, The Most Direct Means to Eternal Bliss on How to Practice Awareness Watching Awareness. Four. One of the things you might wonder is what to do after you start watching your awareness. There is nothing else to be done. You just continue with awareness, watching awareness. There are no objects to see. There is no thing to observe there. Just continue for the entire practice session, watching your awareness. Only awareness watching awareness and nothing else. 10. Don't expect any type of experience. 11. If you wonder whether you will have some kind of spiritual experience, then that very wondering means you have added something to awareness watching awareness. 12. Never add anything to awareness watching awareness. 13. The key is to be content just watching your awareness and not to move th from that and not to add anything to that. 14. You may or may not have some kind of spiritual experience. However, you should never expect any kind of spiritual experience. 15. If you wonder if the state is going to deepen, that very wondering means you have added something to the awareness watching awareness method. 16. Never add anything to the awareness watching awareness method. 17. Just the content to be with awareness watching awareness. 
18. You should look at it like awareness, watching awareness is all there is. There's nothing more. 19. When you are observing, not seeking. 21. You are observing, not seeking. If you're seeking something, then there would be seeking and awareness. In reality, only the ultimate, you were just something. Oh my God. You were seeking something, then there would be seeking and awareness, watching awareness. 22. That would mean you would have added seeking to the awareness, watching awareness practice. Never add anything to the awareness, watching awareness practice. Just be content to continue with awareness, watching awareness, without adding anything to it. Passage 4, Angelo Di Lulu, Awake. It's your turn going beyond conceptual self. You have read it many times now. Awakening isn't about concept or understanding. And yet, it's not until you become genuinely curious about this truth that the cracks start forming. At some point, you become truly dumbfounded that although you sense something beyond the boundaries of your life as you can possibly think about it, the conceptual you, it's a complete mystery what that something could be. If you really consider this, it can lead you into a subversive sort of curiosity. Once that curiosity starts to permeate your mind and your heart, you will become willing to let the conceptual self go to find out what is truly beyond. It's the only way. What am I right now when I don't remember myself through memories of the past imaginings of a future, or references, any facts I think I know about myself. Look there, right now, and don't look away. Don't grab onto that life raft of knowing. What is here that is not a thought or image? Go there, and don't turn back. Can I become curious without wanting any thought or con conceptual answers to satisfy that curiosity? What is this? Being willing to stop more precisely. Be willing to be... What is it there is not a thought or image? Go there and don't turn back. Can I become curious without wanting any thought or conceptual answer to satisfy that curiosity? What is this? Being willing to stop. More precisely, be willing to be stopped in your tracks. Because even trying to stop is still doing something. When you're completely stopped, you're in a great position for a force that is beyond your understanding and dimension to come to your aid. Here is what it looks like. Stop trying to gain anything. Stop trying to lose something. Stop trying to fix something about your life. Stop convincing yourself that more seeking will get you what you want. Stop imagining awakening or enlightenment. Stop running into the future, thoughts. Stop running into the past, thoughts. Stop believing you know anything about reality. Stop trying to find something. Stop faking it. Stop pretending you're happy when you aren't. Stop filtering your experience right now. Stop interpreting. Stop managing. Passage 5, Byron Katie. 
a mind at home with itself. In the same way that a, di a diamond can cut through any substance, inquiry can cut through any stressful thought, any blindness or delusion of the mind. Inquiry is the unfailing practice of cutting through delusions. Self-realization pours forth from the Buddha into the Buddha. It's already present in you. So unknown until it is received, listened to and understood in the silence. The Buddha truly doesn't have a teaching to offer. He lives as the answered question, self-realized without self. He acts without doing anything. He teaches without saying anything. Anything that has been said can exist only in the world of illusion we call the past. If the thought the Buddha would teach only what is not. And in doing that, he would be no Buddha at all. Whatever he truly teaches happens in silence. Silence, passage number six, silence of the mind, David Hempfield, 2014. The only end of fear is openness, synonymous with silence of the mind. The one guidance synonymous with God guides perfectly. This will be seen only with a silent mind. The mind may not awaken the mind, may not steady the mind, or become itself awake. That is delusion. Although the open mind may be happier and a more willing conduit to the divine master. Any thought focused on thought is within the mind and is subject to perception as the mind's clarity or confusion would see it. Therefore, the most helpful thing you can do will never be a thought, but a surrender into silence. Inka, thank you so much. You know, everyone, I had to do a little bit of an extra long one because I just wanted to hear how great she reads it. I loved listening to you. And I know we don't do a round of applause or anything, but I'm going to do my own little one for you. Thank you so much. Thank you for being willing to come here. Um, and everybody, it's just so nice to, to have readers come up. So thank you so much for that. Okay. Thank you for the opportunity. Of course, of course. <laughs> so... We uh, just listened to at least five masters there who spoke about in their own words and in the own ways that their teachings kind of have a path. They spoke about how silence ends up being the experience when one deepens into their clarity. And I thought it was really powerful to see how some of the teachers, like um, Byron Katie, are really advocating for inquiry. And we could see Ramana Maharshi in that passage was talking about surrender. Um, when I had wrote The Silence of the Mind, it was very, of course, miracles inspired and was talking about a kind of like root cause analysis. Um, Angelo DeLulo was, was really speaking to um, knowing your purpose and knowing how to abide. And what I got from all these different passages and why I chose to put them together like this is that I've noticed all of the masters each have their own path. Just like here at Awakening Together, we understand everybody is led by their unique inner wisdom. But then I also noticed that this path, it go, they all go up the same mountain. And at some point on the path, every one of them acknowledge silence as that which was beyond mine that which and you know you could pick any one of these teachers words and say it in their words but it's that one thing where i'm kind of overlooking it sometimes and so today i wanted to give us the opportunity together to be able to go from 
restless war ego in the mind that has been really fun to be my experience this week. I've loved it. Um, but to go from a place where things are restless to a place where I can abide silence. And I have a couple of little steps that I want to go through to do those. Um, I talk about these steps every single week on Tuesday nights, so I'm kind of cheating because I've already talked about all of these, and I'm just so excited to talk about them again. And these steps are about being stable in kind of our spiritual path. And it's my experience that kind of following these couple of steps, so there's five of them, they help me deepen into what my highest clarity is or abide and open. So, without further ado, I invite you right now to find a comfortable position um, in your chair or on your couch or wherever you might find yourself. Just kind of notice the body, notice um, where you're being supported. My elbows are supported on the arms of my chair. I'm sitting onto the chair, my back is supported by the chair, what contact points there are. And so just take a moment to uh, get kind of close to the body and, and understand what the body feels like right now, maybe how your feet feel or your knees or your legs, places that we forget about when our attention is not on them. And then I want you to, if you're willing to, place your attention on the part of you that lights up when you follow inner guidance. It might be in your heart, it might be in another place in the center of your chest. And that place that lights up, I encourage you to go to that place and ask inner wisdom inside of yourself if practicing abiding in silence is something for you to do today, right now. My right now to practice. And whatever answer you get, I encourage you to accept that answer and allow that answer to be your answer and hold that answer today as we go through this. And you can stay still or you can open your eyes, whatever you would like. I'm going to be still for a lot of today. And the first thing that I need to abide in silence is a stability in my purpose. So we're going to notice what our purpose is. I am here to truly, genuinely follow what inner wisdom is bringing for me to heal and do. So I'm going to go to that place where I feel the yes of inner wisdom, where I feel I know that I'm following or hearing or doing the right thing. And it doesn't have to be a voice. It doesn't have to even be spiritual. It's a yes inside. It's a yes. And that yes, that inner wisdom, I'm committed to truly, genuinely following it. I find myself here in a sanctuary, listening or delivering a homily. And I understand that while I'm here, my job or my purpose is to listen to and follow what inner wisdom is bringing for me to heal. So for me to abide in silence, the first thing I need is to on my purpose. My second thing 
is acceptance. I'm going to make sure that I accept the circumstances that I'm in. And I do that by recognizing absolutely anything and everything can be used to further my clarity. Whatever I have that is seemingly an issue or a problem is actually a custom tailored opportunity for growth. If you have any restlessness, if you've been thinking and then coming back and then thinking and then coming back, if anything at all has arisen, it has arisen as an opportunity. When I'm clear on my purpose, and I'm genuinely following what inner wisdom has for me to do, then anything arising is here for me as an opportunity for growth. If I, I have any kind of uncomfort in my body, if you notice any warm spots, if you notice any distraction or restlessness, bite that in. We're not rejecting any experience. The right experience isn't to be focused. The right experience isn't to be comfortable. We'll be focused and be comfortable as it comes to us. The right experience is whatever experience I'm having. I accept the experience. And I will use whatever is here to further my clarity. I notice my purpose, I accept circumstances, and now I'm going to explore what truth is. And I encourage you to do this little game with me. I have found it so helpful with everyone I've worked with. We're going to do a game where we notice two things at the same time. The first thing is notice consistency of this moment. And when I say consistency, I mean notice how right now is always now. It's always here. If I say like now, if I say here, if I say this, it's always pointing to the same thing. That's the consistency. There is here now this, this right now, that's always the object of those words. It's never changing. That's very much the same. In this practice, we're noticing two things at the same time. So on one hand, notice the consistency and serenity of this moment. And on the other hand, notice the arising and falling of thought, stories, experiences, they happen at the same time. So on one hand, I'll hold on to this moment. And on the other hand, check out some of those thoughts that have been coming by. And if you haven't had a thought, <laughs> make one up. And notice that the thought comes, but it can't interrupt the moment. See, even when the thought comes, eventually the thought leaves. The emotions come, the emotions eventually leave. There are two things at the same time right now. There's this moment, and then there's story, or thoughts, experiences. And notice how the experiences are not coming from this moment. The experiences are coming from thoughts in the stories. So the first thing that we do is we get centered on our purpose. The second thing we do is we accept circumstances that are here. The third thing we do is notice what's true. And what's true, what's unchanging, what's not moving is this moment. What is moving 
What is changing are stories. And now there's a practice. Now I'm in a space where I can practice. When I'm restless, it can be very difficult to practice because I'm fighting restlessness. In this space, I can be restless and I can notice restlessness is the story I'm experiencing while this moment is unchanging. And so the fourth thing I would invite you to is a little practice. We're going to practice an open, loving invitation to thought and experience. Here's what it sounds like. I'm going to give some self-dialogue. If you feel to just listen, you may. If you feel to repeat it yourself after I say it, you may. Here's what I say. I am open to any thought. Any thought who needs to come to me. You may come to me now. I know thought is either a visual reflection of a memory, an audio reflection of a memory, or thought abides as a concept. Whatever thought is showing up in this moment, is welcome. Each thought has as much room in my consciousness as it needs. It may stay as long as it needs to stay and take up as much space as it needs to take up. I invite all thoughts to come. And when I do this practice, especially if I have some emotional conflicts, I'll notice that some thoughts are charged. I don't want to do something. I've had the thought, I don't want to work. And with that thought, you can take your own thought. I say, hello, you're welcome here. I notice that you're a reflection of an audio. It's not real, it's an audio that says, I don't want to work. And there's emotional charge. I see you. You're welcome here. You may stay as long as you need to stay. This practice requires a little bit of stillness to give this open, loving invitation the thought and experience. To do as the masters are saying, I want to abide in this openness, even while doing. And so we're getting towards the end of our little practice session and time for open meditation and sharing. And as we transition is when we will practice the last step. The last step is to abide in this openness even while doing. The way I like to say it is if I have no stories that I'm entertaining in my mind, no stories, it leaves just the don't know mind. And the don't know mind is silent, even though it's active. So if you were still and it would be helpful to you, I invite you to do a little uh, ritual to take you out of that stillness. I take my hands, my palms, I just rub them together lightly until it's a little bit warm on my palms and then I cover my eyes. And I can feel the warmth in my face. And I open my eyes while they're still under my palms and warm. And then I slowly bring my And that brings me back to this moment. And everybody, as you come back to this moment, we're going to move on to some other parts of the program. 
I encourage you as much as possible to find which one of these steps you can keep going with. And if you can keep going with all four, that is abiding in openness. So just notice if you're here right now and it feels alive in you, keep confirming your purpose is to follow your inner wisdom. If it's alive in you to accept your circumstances, that whatever is here is here for your healing. If it's alive in you to notice two things at the same time all day long for as long as you can, to notice what's true. If it's alive in you to practice a loving, open invitation. Or if it's possible and alive in you to maintain that open invitation all day long today without leaving that don't know mind. You will leave the stillness, but you won't leave the op open invitation. Okay. So now is the time for you to contemplate openly on your own. Uh, we will play a song. We also take donations at this time. We are self-sustaining here at Awakening Together. And in this song, I chose it because it says, I can choose to be free in my mind. And for those of you who are feeling today to practice all day long being in that open invitation while doing, the song will be great. Marisol, if you'd play it, thank you so much. What a vibing great song. I love it. Okay, we have an open sharing time about uh, 16 minutes or so. Anybody who would like to share, this is the time to do so. You may raise your hand and come up on stage. The name of the song that just played is called Free Me by a singer called Anise, which is A-N-E-E-S. I don't know if that's how you say it. That's how I said it. Hey, John. Really nice to see you. Good morning. Come on up. Morning, David. Oh, man. Yeah, I just want to thank you for... Um... The reminder of the practice to notice the silence under everything, even when what you appear to be going through doesn't feel silent. And uh, that, yeah, that speaks to me because it's always there. It's just, it's, I'm, I'm starting to see that now. It's always there. I think I saw it before, but you know. It gets obscured by the mind who wants to say, no, you got to focus on this shit. You know, this is what you got to focus on because this is what's happening. But this is happening in this. And to be able to incorporate that in as a practice and just a general reminder, this is always here. So thank you for that. And that's a great reminder. And uh, I'm going to do that when I walk. I'm going to do that when I watch my baseball game. I'm going to do that when I see the few video guys on uh, <laughs> uh, later on today. And I'm going to do that when my mind wants to run and say, you are not that. So thank you. Really appreciated hearing you today. Thank you, John. <laughs> I love the vulnerability and your willingness to come share. I know that I resonate with what you said, and I'm sure many others do too. Tina, come on up. Thank you. A, you had great music. I just have to say that. Both songs. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, what I really um, got was um, lately there's been a lot of clarity with uncomfortability with all sorts of things. And I really loved the part when you said, welcome the uncomfortable thought and feeling. And that's the thing I don't, I, um, my ego has not been doing that. I've not been doing that. You know, instead, I'm, I'm, there's something in me still resisting the uncomfortable feeling, which means it's not processing. It's not the process isn't happening because I'm like putting a boulder between it. Anyway, I'm going to practice. Thank you for that. I'm going to work with this week. I'm going to, when I feel uncomfortable to sit and, and try to do, um, this practical practice of going, welcome, I welcome the uncomfortable thought or the uncomfortable feeling. 
Um, I love how you're practical with this and with your program. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Tina. And Tina, I, I, I love that you take whatever you're hearing and you turn it into a practice for you to do. And I heard similar from John. And just for those listening, I want to really, really expressly point out that the immense value comes from listening to your own inner wisdom and whatever practice that inner wisdom gives following it. It's not the practice that I'm giving. It's not the things I'm saying. It's Tina's ability. It's John's ability to look at inner guidance and say, what am I to do? And then follow it. That is the power. Thank you so much, the two of you. Beverly, come on up. Um, thank you so much for your homily. That was that was really beautiful. I um I was kind of in a almost a contemplative state before I tuned in because so, there was a lot of anger coming up this morning, <laughs> and uh, you know my, the lawyer in me was like, but 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 you know I had all kinds of uh, <laughs> things going on, and I'm really really good, so I can talk myself out of anything or into anything, and um, I just found myself making a different choice this morning. And, um, and then just as I did that, uh, like, it, it's funny to see how there's, you know, some of the emotions that we would try to avoid, there's like so much wisdom behind them. And as you, for me, it was in my body, you know, to let anger just have it say, and then kind of burn and move into like you said, just it all goes back to silence, even the things that we're trying to avoid and that are really painful, you know, if we let them just play out, they kind of moves back into the silence. And um, and then there's just no need, like like everything seems so small after that. Like when, when you know, it's not a, you know, I'm gonna not be mad today, you know, like it's not that kind of energy. <laughs> it's a different energy that it shifts into where everything just kind of almost becomes nothing where just a couple hours ago, it was so huge and, and unmanageable. And, um, so just, uh, you know, and there's, is a transformational energy in, in doing that, not just getting to the anger and going, Ooh, I survived that one. It's not like, <laughs> not like that, but it's more like, um, there's, there's something I feel being transformed in, in that, choice you know to to just say let me just sit here for a minute and and not defend myself or not you know do the normal thing that i normally would do so um this was just very timely thank you thank you uh, that was an excellent uh just describing of the direct experience and uh, of doing this i really loved listening to that and it whenever i have contemplated that what you had just mentioned came out as stability and, and accepting it's, it's really this understanding, as you said, you know, whatever is coming, it, it also goes away, you know, it, it dissolves away and it, and it always leads back into silence. And so I'm never threatened by what comes. Nothing that comes can threaten me. All that can happen is I have an opportunity to understand something that I didn't understand yet. There's, you know, why this thought is coming. So each of these ends up being an opportunity for me rather than something that I should reject or be scared of. Thank you so much. Melaine, or Melanie, sorry. I really liked all the steps. And I was very intrigued when you talked about um, the love and invitation to thoughts that you, I think you said that you would say to the thought, you are a reflection of an audio. I, I, I love that idea, but I don't think I really understand it. Like, but I like the idea that I would speak to the thought saying, oh, you're just a reflection of an audio. But then I was wondering what the audio is. I don't know. So I was wondering if you could expand on that. Absolutely. Thank you for asking. First off, all the credit for that one goes to um, Angelo DeLulo. He wrote it in his book called, what was it called? So Awake Now, I think. Um, and he had pointed out that thoughts, you as we know, like you can't take a thought and like put it in your hands. And he said, you know, what is a thought then? If you can't make it an object, then what is it? Uh, awake, it's your turn. Thank you so much, Rhoda and Regina. Um, so he had mentioned, so what is it? And he said, well, it's either 
an audio or a visual. But the thing about audio is you can hear it in your ears. and You can't hear a thought in your ears. Visual, you can see it with your eyes, but you can't see a thought with your eyes. So it's actually not an audio or a visual. There's a reflection of an audio or a visual. That reflection is kind of like happening here in my mind, and I'm supposedly like remembering it. But, you know, I can also imagine a future. It's not like it has to be real. So what is it a reflection of? I don't know. A reflection of audio, right? It sounds the same as what comes in my ears, except it's not. It's not the same. It's a reflection. And the reason why I talk to this thought and I say, you are a blank, it is not to shame the thought or judge the thought or change the thought. I do that to help the thought know its place. And it's really this, I'm affirming the thought. You exist as the reflection of audio. You're not more important than that. You're not less important. I give it space to be here. Mm. Thank you so much for the question. Well, thank you for answering it. Thank you. Thank you. Regina, come on up. Good morning, everyone. Sorry, I haven't spoken yet today. Let me wake up the boys. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, David, during the exercise, I think you called it, um, you know, the part that Melanie was just speaking about, you know, I heard you say something about, um, you know, a thought being a visual reflection, which of course I, under I understood. And I heard you talk about, uh, or it could be an audio reflection, which I understood. Oh, sorry. Let me take that back. Let me take that back. You said, uh, uh, sorry, I'm having trouble getting my brain going. <laughs> Let me do some brain tapping here. <laughs> uh, my voice and my brain. Isn't that funny how neither one of them want to participate right now? Um, okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. So um, you said that a thought is a visual reflection of a memory. Or it could be an audio reflection of a memory. Um, there was an anticipation here that the next thing you would talk about, because both those words used memory, which had to do with past. So there was an anticipation here that next you would bring in a thought. You know, I didn't have thoughts about what that would be, but, you know, maybe a thought is an imagination of the future or something. But you didn't, which really stood out to me. You said that. A thought is a visual reflection of a memory. A thought is a audio reflection of a memory or a concept. Look at the balloons or a concept. And, and I just thought how perfect because, you know, again, there was an anticipation of some kind of a, uh, a description of a thought as, a, as an imagination of the future or something. My mind didn't go that far. There was just an anticipation, but a concept. I mean, that's really all the future can be, right? And I just thought it was absolutely perfect that you, that that's all you had to say. It's, it's one of these three things. It's a, you know, it's a, a visual reflection of a memory, an audio reflection of a memory, or it's a concept. And there's absolutely nothing else that it can be. That's, the thought cannot meet any other definition. Uh, that's That limits it. So I just thought it was perfect. Um, also, I appreciated uh, your little rubbing the palms together and touching the eyes, although that was still difficult for me. Uh, what I do have great difficulty coming out of meditation, great difficulty. Uh, that was still difficult, just moving, but still it was kind of kind of kind of nice, you know, just uh, experiment with a transition of coming out and coming back. So I, I appreciated that. All right, bye. Thank you, Regina. Yeah, you know, I am a I'm sharing a conglomerate of wisdom that is not mine. Um, so, you know, Angelo DeLulo was the one to identify those three different categories of thought. Um, and, you know, I was actually, as you were talking, I was anticipating that you might ask me, so what about the future? Uh, you actually answered it, though. Um, but if I had the chance, my answer would have been the same as yours, which is I, the reason why there's not a future reflection, like a, a future visual reflection. Well, the future itself doesn't actually exist. 
And so when I make a future, I make it based off of a past. And when I think of concepts, so we said visual reflection, audio reflection, and then concept. When I think of a concept, really, it's just a group of thoughts. And it's a group of thoughts about probably the past or that I'm making up. And if I have a future, it's just a concept that I'm projecting on a timeline in front of me rather than on a timeline right now or behind me. Um, but it is still just a concept. And then, uh, yeah, I can't remember the other thing. Rhoda, you just show up at the perfect time. I'm so happy. Come on up, Rhoda. <laughs> Hello, darling. How are you today? Oh, I'm amazing. I, I, and I get to I, share with you tonight, so it'll be even more amazing. Yeah, we get to talk a little more tonight. How fun is that? I um, as, I, as I listen to the reflections of the reflections, I can't help but notice something that has just really come alive for me lately, and that is not only that thoughts are reflections, audio or visual reflections of memories, but that feelings themselves are also reflections. They're kind of like in tune vibrations that are basically just reflecting something. I don't know why that's so alive right now but that kind of excites me because suddenly it doesn't feel like there's anything i need to do about it it's just watching so thank you for sharing the practice because it really is helping to deepen that seeing thank you thank you Rita. inka come on up so I want to thank Regina and you for coming back and clarifying um, during the practice, my thought that came in supposedly had something to do with the future. And, and so all along I had this question and then Regina answers and then you answer. And it just reinforces this experience of mine that there's always a teacher when I'm ready. And and that is a really fabulous place to be at, to, to trust that there's a teacher and I'm ready to listen to it. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Inka. Okay, everybody. So our time is, is at its end. I want to give you some gratitude. And then we'll listen to a closing song, which if you like the other two, man, uh, let me tell you this song. I love this song. Uh, but thank you so much for being here. And I talk about these five steps every Tuesday at 5.30 p.m. ET, as well as two other steps that I think come after them, which is stability and inquiry. And the last one, stability and non-identification, um, which are a little bit more subtle. Uh, but mark your calendar if you want to see those Tuesday at 5.30 ET. Thank you for being here. Lots of love. And Marisol, our last one is called Armor by Aniko. And there's some lines in it that says, I'm going to, it basically says, I keep my head above water. And it says there's so many waves. And what I see is that the mind has so many waves that I won't go under. I keep my head above water. Uh, Marisol, if you'd play that closing song for us. Thank you so much. You've been watching our online gathering. It happens weekly on Sundays at 1015 a.m. Eastern Time. To join us live in the sanctuary, visit our website, awakening-together.org. You'll want to click on online sanctuary in the main menu, and then in the drop-down menu, look for how to enter the sanctuary. Right there at the top of the page is a clickable link. We'd love to see you in the sanctuary and join with you in fellowship. Thank you again for watching. Also, please know that if you'd like to stay connected via the Awakening Together channel here on YouTube, you can subscribe and hit the bell for more notifications. We hope to see you in the sanctuary.